Hello everyone, welcome to your next section. In this one we are going to code out some hidden Markov models. We're going to learn how to uh, download a package in Anaconda that isn't part of the official, it's not officially supported, and we're going to play a little bit with how to build these models because they are a little bit different than the models and the, the format that we've used up until this point. So uh, in this class we're going to build our first HMM. We're going to use a very simple model, it's just going to be a two-state model in order to do so. Uh, we're going to download a package that's not like currently supported by Anaconda, meaning uh, it is a smaller package. It actually used to be a part of Scikit-Learn, but because Markov models are so different than the current, than the, basically all the types that they're focusing on, they've decided to remove it and have it be its own um, group and uh, community to work on it. Uh, and as a result, uh, you know, Anaconda can't get every, can't have everything supported all the time. It's just one of those packages that hasn't gotten gotten added to the feature list yet. So it's perfectly good to use, and I'll show you how to do it. Then we're going to play around a little bit with some of the basic features of hidden Markov models and how to get that all uh, going and started up. So uh, with that, guys, let's get ready to do some code. We're going to play with hidden Markov models using this uh, package called HMM Learn. Let's move on. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to download our packages. I imported NumPy because you always need NumPy for something. And uh, we are going to build a hidden Markov model using this library called HMM Learn. Uh, we're going to import the multinomial HMM package or function in order to build our thing. Uh, so, and last thing we're going to do is import this thing called warnings, which is going to uh, remove uh, some soft warnings that Jupyter is going to throw at us for using using this package at the moment. And I'll tell you what those warnings are. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get you guys to install HMM Learn on your Anaconda uh, setup. So how you do that is you're going to input this information if you're working on terminal into um, into uh, like if you're working on a Mac, you go into terminal and you're going to run this run this uh, run this command. Uh, now, you'll have the same thing basically for Windows if you're working on Windows, although I think this path might be slightly different. Depends on what the commands are for Conda and Windows if you're using Windows. But if you go into your terminal and you run that, it will ask you, it'll look for the package, ask you if you want to install it. This is gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, and mine has already been installed, so you don't need to necessarily worry about it. But because mine's already installed, it's, you know, just doing some weird stuff. Make sure that you just install it. And once you're done installing, what you'll want to do is restart your kernel. Because the way, you, way your kernel is set up right now, it doesn't, it didn't, ha it didn't load a, all the, it didn't load, it loads all the libraries when you start your kernel. And you pick which libraries you want, but because it didn't, you didn't have this library installed, it wasn't loaded in that time. So you wanna restart it and then you can then, uh, you know, download this stuff here, no problem. Okay, so first thing I do is I uh, go into this warnings package and then I ignore the soft warnings because it's gonna throw some errors around like how it's calculating some things in one of the functions that it uses uh, in, in fitting. Uh, so let's not worry about that too much. The first thing I do is I'm gonna create a matrix called start probabilities, remember our image from our last class that had the starting probabilities as the top layer. I'm just setting these both to 50%, meaning there is an equal opportunity for our hidden layers to uh, initialize with those, okay? Um, our trend, this is our, our transformation or transition matrix. So this is the likelihood of um, states moving both within themselves and between each other. And then covar is our covariance matrix. This is gonna represent our latent features in our hidden Markov model, okay? First thing I do is we build, we you know initialize our object. We say we want this not multinomial HMM. We're gonna have two uh, components that it's looking at. We set our starting probability as well as our uh, transition matrix. You don't need to include this stuff. You can, pa if you have enough data to pass in to your hidden Markov model, you can go without this and maybe use some default features or use some special features of your own. And you can just like remove this and have it train without it. All right. I don't have a great data set to show you how to make this work, guys. So I've made a, just a handful of examples, uh, of, of, of like basically three training examples to fit our hidden Markov model. This is obviously not enough data, but the point, I'm just gonna try and show you a couple of points in terms of how this fits, okay? So first off, uh, you'll notice that basically this is our data here. If this, we, could, we could put this as a different different variable. We can set this as X 
and move this over like that and then we can put in fit x and this starts to look a lot more similar so you'll notice that uh, in my array of arrays we have two problem two trend two types zero and one so we have um you know our two problem uh, transition probabilities is either going or two states is either going to be state zero or state one uh, and you'll notice that we have uh, sequences of varying lengths so we're saying here um, you know, in this training example, we got state 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. In this training example, we got only zeros. In this training example, we have less than the other ones previously. So there's four here, and there's three in this one. So when we fit this, what what ends up happening is the, mo the hidden Markov model is learning, okay, um, based on the past event, so here's our first event, and then based on the past event, did it stay at zero or did it move to one? Did it stay at zero or did it move to one? Uh, and you can do this uh, with your hidden Markov model. You can actually have some Y data sometimes as well. Um, in this case, uh, we just built that. And when we fit this, we'll be able to get the new transition matrix. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like before we look at this other stuff, okay? So remember that our hidden matrix, our hidden Markov matrix before was 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3, 0 0.7. Look at how it's changed. So state one is at 70.04% likelihood that it'll change, stay to the same state, and the other state, our state two, or state one, I guess, zero and one, is at 70.5. So it trained and learned different transition, uh, transition uh, probabilities from this data. The next thing I want to show you is, okay, so let's say we give it another another state, uh, another, uh, and we want to see the likelihood that, uh, that, you know, the probability that this, that it was able to find the, whatever state it was, it, it was in from this. So based on this data, what state do we expect our hidden Markov model to be in? And what is the likelihood that, you know, we, that this, that this, um, what is the likelihood that this sequence of events happen given the transition matrix and like the states and what we know about it currently. And this says that it's uh, 0.25%. And how you have to do that is because this gives the log probability. Um, this function gives a log probability of this event set happening. You take, uh, uh, the e of that and that gives you the actual probability and this is this is this is zero because it gives both the log probability as well as an array of values that it predicted from it the next thing you can do with your in markov model is to generate samples so i can say i want 500 samples here and it will give me the state transitions it expected from that so this is the states and if we print z here we go this is giving us the uh, state that it was likely in when uh uh, for these samples. Okay, um, so that's basically all I wanted to show you with hidden Markov models, guys. It's not exactly easy to uh, visualize this. We can, uh, it is possible to do visualizations. However, I don't usually like to show them. It's a little bit beyond the uh, beyond the, 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 the skill set of this course, and it's not always extremely useful to show those visualizations. You have the transition matrices you can kind of build them out from there. So uh, we're probably going to end this chapter with three classes as opposed to four. If there's a lot of interest in this, maybe we can add a fourth class later on. But for now, I think this is all I really wanted to introduce you to in terms of the world of hip Markov models, all right? So with that, let's move into our recap. So in this section, we learned how to build basic Markov models. We learned how to download unofficial packages for Jupyter Notebooks and to get them installed. So if you're looking for a package that isn't like in the Net Anaconda Navigator, you can search online and be like, I want a uh, Conda, I want to install this package. And so Conda HMM Learn, and it'll give you the path in order to do so. And then we learned a little bit about how to play with Markov um, attributes and how to interpret some of those outputs.